Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo. For those of you who are familiar with my YouTube channel, you will have noticed that this is not EVE Online. I'm experimenting with recording videos about other games, for a change, and I am also experimenting with recording videos on a Windows operating system, for a change. Uh, this video is intended as, a, as an upcoming patch briefing for my fellow Fuel Rats. Uh, this is the Elite Dangerous 2.4 Beta 1 version. Uh, this is the closed beta. Today is August the 17th, 2017. Or in the Elite Dangerous calendar, uh, August the 17th, 3303. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the new route plotting tool. Uh, we now have the ability to plot routes up to 20,000 light years as long as we've selected the fastest routes option. Uh, economical route plotting is still limited to 1,000 light year chunks. Uh, for the fastest routes option, we've also got the option to use jet cone boosts off of white dwarves and neutron stars. I'm a little unclear on the exact logic that the route plotting tool is using, but uh, playing around with it a little bit, I believe the route plotting tool prefers neutron stars for long journeys and white dwarves for uh, trips, for shorter trips, for example, inside the bubble. Uh, so let me turn on jet cone boost. Let me select a bookmark for a solar system I found already that's almost 20,000 light years away. Uh, and let me plot a route. Uh, the route plotting tool is significantly faster. It doesn't seem fast because I'm telling it to use a jet boost. So that's why this is still, uh, this seems to be taking a while. Uh, but given that it's a 20,000 light year route, it's still pretty impressive. Uh, when you don't select Jet Boost, it goes much faster than this. It takes about uh, one-third to one-quarter of the time. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, but when you do use Jet Boosts, it colors the different parts of your routes according to whether or not they, those are boosted. Normal jumps will be orange, so here you can see orange dotted lines here. Uh, whereas jet boosts off of a neutron star or a white dwarf are blue. Alright, so this... These are a couple of neutron star jumps. This is a bunch of regular jumps. Uh, a whole bunch of regular jumps. Here's a neutron, another neutron, another neutron. More regulars, a neutron, a regular, a neutrons. Um, and having plotted this route, it says it's going to take 400 jumps for me to get to that solar system. Right. Uh, if I do the route plotting again, let me actually focus attention back on that destination. If I do the route plotting again without the jet cone boost, and I have to turn it on, turn it back off again just to make sure it's not using the jet cone boost, the route plotting is much faster. It will, of course, involve more jumps, but it'll still be faster uh, to, uh, to plot the route. And that's going to take 520 jumps, so it's able to calculate that much more quickly. Uh, that may not seem like a huge difference, 520 to 400, uh, so we may still want to use third-party tools such as the uh, Neutron Router that Spanch wrote, although Spanch has said in the Impound Rat Chat in IRC that uh, he's going to update the tool since the in-game route plotting tool doesn't require Spanch's tool to give the user as many intermediate points. Uh, what else do I want to cover? Oh, the fuel icon on routes. So when you have a route plotted, uh, and this is going to affect the debrief, uh, the solid and the dotted orange lines are the same. Uh, that their meaning hasn't changed, but now there's an explicit icon for last chance to scoop fuel on route. And when the user mouses over it, it actually explains the icon right there. Uh, so where the user sees this icon, that's their last chance to scoop fuel before they get stranded. So we'll definitely want to include that as part of the debrief. Uh, let's see. Limpid synthesis. 
So we've got a couple of new synthesis options. We can make limpets out of micro-materials. We can make four limpets using ten iron and ten tin. You will, of course, need uh, four tons of free cargo space in your cargo racks in order to do this. But if you've got the iron and you've got the tin, then you can make more limpets out in the field without having to return to a port, which will be especially useful on long-range rescues uh, where you don't have a whole lot of cargo space or you had a lot of limpets, but you also did a lot of long-range rescues for whatever reason, given how unusual LLRs are. Um, but yeah, we can make limpets out in the field. Uh, next, uh, life support. We can restock the life support, uh, from synthesis as well, using two iron and one nickel that will completely refill the emergency oxygen. I'm not a nuclear chemist. I'm not an alchemist. I don't know how it's turning iron and nickel into oxygen. Don't ask me how that works. But if you have two iron and one nickel, then you can convert that, uh, then your synthesis system can convert that into fully restocking the life support. Which, of course, will depend on the rating of the life support system. So five minutes for echo rated, uh, then seven and a half, ten, fifteen, up to twenty-five minutes for the alpha rated. So... This will help us save more of our Code Red cases, at least amongst the more experienced players. Newer players, uh, any given new player probably hasn't had a chance to dabble in the mining or the use of a surface recon vehicle to gather elements yet. So we'll probably still have to deal with five minute Code Red cases in Sidewinders in new Leuton 2 tenths 482A8. That's probably still gonna be our uh, most common rescue site. Uh, but for but for players, for clients who have iron and nickel and are code red, we can tell them to buy more time by going to the synthesis. Uh, so the right-hand panel, the inventory tab, go down to synthesis, tap uh, over to the synthesis options, hit life support, hit resupply life support. It's a bit of a complicated sequence if for somebody who's never actually gone through those steps before. So we'll want to include instructions for that in uh, in Mecha Squeak. And we'll also need to have those instructions translated into all the languages that we support. Uh, but that will help us save some code red cases that would otherwise have been lost. Uh, finally, repair limpets. Uh, so this beta does have uh, the repair limpets. So I've got a repair limpet controller on my own ship. Uh, presumably this repairs hull and canopy, although I haven't tried it as yet. Um, let me actually go and damage my ship first. This feels so raw. Alright, you know what? I think that's good enough. Let's hit heat sink. Alright, uh... Heat sink deployed. Alright, I took module damage. One of the things I wanted to test was the cockpit canopy, but that didn't get damaged at all. Uh, I definitely didn't take hull damage. Let me try that again. Is the cargo scoop off? No, let me turn off the cargo hatch. I need to take at least a little hull damage to test this.
the cockpit canopy and the hull did not take any damage whatsoever. Uh, just stuff that I think would be covered by an auto field maintenance unit. Let me try dropping to normal space and seeing if this does anything. Okay. So, since I didn't have any damage to the cockpit canopy or the hull, the two things I would have expected the repair limpet to fix. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this is actually doing anything. Uh, I'll probably have to go uh, slam into a planet a bit hard in order to test this. Uh, I'll have to make a separate video on that. But in that, any case, that covers uh, this briefing. Uh, if I learn more about the repair, how the repair limpet works, I'll upload a separate video.